there are uh, substances found in our islands that, uh, like for example, acacia is found uh, in our islands, and that's a very high, that has a very high concentration of DMT. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've found in some of the Philippine archives in uh, the Chicago Field Museum uh, that uh, we've been very fortunate to have access to uh, what you would describe uh, as headlays or a balanga uh, that goes around the head made of acacia leaves. And that also implies uh, that they had a knowledge of uh, some of these uh, altered states of consciousness and substances. Uh, we have uh, kava or wild kava that grows in the Philippines. Uh, most Filipinos don't even know that it grows there. Uh, most Polynesians don't know that it grows there. Mm. Uh, and it's referred to as uh, kuyo or kuyot. Um, this, is, uh, this is also a medicine way, uh, 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 also induces an altered state of consciousness that is used throughout the Pacific uh, in places like Fiji and Vanuatu and in Hawaii for uh, communication with your ancestors to enhance that communication. Uh, so there are uh, substances that induce altered states of consciousness, but there's documentation, like for example, with the, with the Puyo, the Pava, that by the early 20th century had been completely forgotten. And there was actually, when the, when the, the Philippines was a U.S. territory, there was a, a company Sears and Roebuck that was trying to market Philippine kava to the United States as a type of temperance wine. But obviously that didn't go over very well, <laughs> since it's quite bitter. Sure. But uh, it's been completely forgotten by our people. And uh, that's one of my, my side projects of, is uh, to restore uh, cultural awareness among our people of some of these plant medicines.